not the one we call up, is it? This is how you come down. Get some voices heard. A man was written into us with the title of his email is titled Bigfoots Along the Peace River. Peace River is where I recently where I just was and where I was last September and the September before, where there is a non-stop barrage of incidents, experiences, sightings of these beings and more. Send me two emails. This first little part. Sorry for the email. Re-email? Sorry for the email, but I have attached a podcast I just did, so you have a general idea. I'm not some hack on understanding human consciousness. I'm a humble guy. But after watching a few more videos of yours, I am certain they have not only developed sage-like elves of consciousness, they also have bilocation capabilities. The humming they hear is coming from them, and they are likely controlling our thoughts and using the fear button to keep us away from their territory. I really want to thank you for doing this as my research has finally come to completion. Completion! Wow, that's a statement. Now I just need to meet one and have a chat to see what they want from us. I don't think they want anything from us. Who knows? That'd be great if you could find out. Now, next video. Uh, sorry, next email. Posted this reply on your channel and sorry for a few typos. The term prana. P-R-A-N-A -A is the life force in nature and also referred to qi in Chinese literature. As a long-time researcher on this topic, you're doing a great job with this channel. I was not just a casual researcher and even had a map with pins on it with all the recorded sightings. I read all the books I could, but if this channel was available 30 years ago, it would have made it so much more rewarding. Oh, that's good news. Really great stuff, Steve, and thank you for doing this. One thing I noticed, a lot of sightings are close to mountains with glaciers nearby. Not always, but there is a noticeable correlation. Indian sages often develop siddhas and can make objects, materials, and there are even accounts of bilocation. Siddhas. S-I-D-H-A-S. -S. Never heard the word before myself. 
If the hairy man has developed siddhas to this level, they are way more spiritually awake than we could ever imagine. I sent you a recent email describing my understanding on this matter, and as crazy as it may sound, I think it is correct. All right, here's the other email. These are all in a row saved in my notes. Hi, Steve. I recently posted on one of your videos about a guy that had telepathic connection with a female Bigfoot along the Peace River. I grew up on a farm that ran along the banks of the Peace River just above the island he mentioned. I remember that email. There is actually... There is actually their islands. One is just below the Taylor Bridge facing east. The second large one is just below that one. And there's a third, about, a, about three kilometers further down the river. They are most likely there because the Saskatoons grow like grapes in that region. Also, a lot of wild raspberries and cranberries. When I was about 14, I remember getting a strange feeling, and I noticed my dog was frightened. I would not even bark. He was not afraid of bears and was fearless. I only had a 22 and thought maybe it was a mountain lion, but they are rare in that in that they were rare in that area then. We did not even have elk around there then, and the places full of them today. My gut instinct told me to get out of there, and we did. I also remember a strange smell, but wild cranberries have a stink to them when they are overripened, so I just thought it was that. Twenty years later, I lived on a farm in Enderby. Enderby. That's Alberta. Oh, no, it's not. Enderby is South Central BC, sorry. And I heard strange howling-like sound. I've heard recordings from, this, from the U.S. that sounded identical. I noticed my dog did not like the sound, and it was miles away so he was not smelling anything. There is no way a man or a wolf could make this sound. It was early March, calving season, and it was about 3 a.m. in the morning. I suspect it was one doing a mating call. I sent the next part of the story on another video of yours and it would not post. I think it was being erased on purpose and made you, and made you even, maybe, and made you even erased it? Maybe you even erased it? I didn't erase nothing. You may even think that I'm a Fruit Loop for sharing this next part of the story with you. I'm like you and don't give a shit if you or anyone else think that I'm... think what I am about to tell you is New Age spiritual fluff. I used to work in high tech and have traveled all over the world. When I lived in Japan, I spent a couple years researching everything I could on Bigfoot. I'm a Buddhist and Vedic teacher and I have a book published on the topic and I've done interviews that can be viewed on YouTube. I'm actually a fan of Buddhism. I wish I had more time once I do to look into it more. From what I've learned so far, I have interest in it. I'm not telling you this to blow my own horn, but let you know I know things most men don't about human consciousness. I think my understanding on consciousness can help you and others understand something more about the hairy man. One of the classic stories that occurred around Harrison Lake made me realize this. Harrison Lake is not too far from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, you guys. I'm certain you've also read this story, and it made me understand more about these creatures. It was the one where a guy's dog flushed a juvenile out of a hollow cedar tree, and he shot it thinking it was a bear. Pretty sure that was John Green that reported that one, wasn't it? Who also retired in Harrison Lake. That's an old, old account. Later, an angry female showed up and was hitting the ground with a rope-like device. This one spoke to the man in anger in a native tongue. This event clearly demonstrates these beings have shaman-like abilities, not to mention the story you posted about one communicating with the hunter telepathically. It was even, it was even able to make his stomach buzz and feel upset. I have a good friend in Australia that was an art dealer and she, wanted, she went out to a remote area where local tribes were gathering for a sit-in. She was going there to purchase artwork and when she arrived everyone was leaving in a panic because one person had a hairy man sighting. They also live in the jungles of Malaysia and Indonesia that appear to be smaller than the ones in BC. I was convinced these beings exist when they discovered bones of Gigantopithecus that dated to two million years ago. Most people do not even realize that just 25,000 years ago we had Neanderthals. Neanderthals, Denisovans, and our ancestors all living on this planet at the same time, and they're distinctive different groups and not different races. It takes meditation and spiritual practice for a human to change their consciousness. However, the most important contributor to attaining the higher consciousness is the close connection in nature. The life force that the soul needs comes from the prank in nature. 
You've spent enough time in beautiful BC to understand the euphoric feeling you get in a cedar forest or sitting by a slow-moving creek trickling through the forest. This is food for the soul, like air is for the physical body. When the soul leaves the physical body, it becomes an orb of light. They appear in digital phot photography because they vibrate at a different dimension and the sifting effect allows digital images to capture them. When any of us pass over this orb, eventually, when any of us pass over, this orb eventually reincarnates again in a new body and take corporeal form once again. We do not go back to God until we gain full consciousness and then the cycle of birth and death ends. I don't think these beings are shape-shifting and the orbs around them are likely their spirit guides and ancestors just like the orbs captured around us. I've read too many stories about natives being taken to their caves and how the entrances are concealed. They also hunt for food and pick berries. The natives on the coast called them stick-throwing people because they were trying to get them to leave good berry picking areas. If you have the ability to change a dimension from an orb to a physical being, you would likely not be hunting and looking for food or living in a cave. I also do not think they are gathering biological samples for extraterrestrial races. I think they are truly forest sages that have likely changed their consciousness by living in balance with nature. They obviously have a large brain and are likely more advanced spiritually than us. The negative stories you hear about them could be the, old, the odd psychopath amongst them. Or maybe they had a family member that was harmed by a human and they hold a grudge. They are wise enough to know to fear men and it is for good reason. When they attain higher consciousness, we also gain extra perception. They seem to be able to read our intentions and can communicate telepathically. We all have these abilities to a certain degree. They avoid us for a reason and I can tell you already, tell, you already know why for the most part. The world is going through great changes right now because we are entering a new yuga cycle. I predict we will see more of them and we need to respect their habitat and preserve space for them. We are dealing with highly intelligent forest sages. You need to be more clever if you want to capture more images. Have large trail cams in obvious places with smaller ones offset in different areas. I think they are even aware enough to not leave tracks possible. They're clearly, they are clearly highly physic beings and the reason I'm going to attempt to have contact with them is not for fame. I think we need more I think we need them more than they need us. Imagine how the world would potentially change our narrow views and rigid beliefs if we suddenly knew they existed. We would have to leave more habitat for them. In addition, if they are what they what I think they are consciously, we would learn so much more about our own real spiritual potential. I only discovered your channel recently, but thank you for bringing more awareness to the world about the hairy Buddhas of the forest. Sheldon Moore. Well, that's interesting, Sheldon. Sounds like you've spent a lot of time gaining knowledge, wisdom, and um, yeah, we're all learning, right? We can all agree and disagree on various points. Uh, one thing for me, Sheldon, is... You know, I'm sure they pick bears to go hunting. We've, I've talked to numerous people observing them hunting. They take animals from our camps. They're opportunists on farms, etc. But then there's the other part. These other part, like where people like Edgar, our, our nuclear physicist, reports of seeing them jumping up and down and beginning to become transparent from the waist up. What's up with that? And then we have the numerous nuclear power and weapons sites who have had these beings penetrate all of the security barriers to only be standing there looking up at the CCT, the, the closed caption TV screen, the security screen, at the people inside. And then all hell breaks loose and they disappear. They don't know how they got in there. They can see the prints on the inside of the compound and then they jump, literally jump over the fence. One officer reported as they left basically the body form of a frog leaving when it easily went over the 12-foot fence with barbed wire on it. But anyway, um, but we have that that goes on. Also, Edgar and his colleagues were curious about the footprints. They took an, a, a radiation detecting tool over there, and sure enough, the footprints gave off radiation. What's up with that? And then uh, what else? We have so many people who have witnessed these things absolutely vanishing before their eyes. Boom, gone running along, one step, boom, vanished. 
Also, we have had reports for how many decades now, uh, pilots, hunters, trappers, people in the snow, snowmobiling, snowmobiling, observing the tracks, going through the snow, boom, they stop. Stop. Okay. So, there is a lot being reported, a lot being eyewitnessed, and it's very, it makes it confusing and tough for us simple humans to come to an absolute um, summary and claim to know exactly what, what's up, right? It's really tough. But everyone has to be heard, including you. Everything, the knowledge that people are acquiring has got to be spoken out loud about and shared. It just has to be. That's what we're doing. It's working, right? So, please keep digging. Please keep learning. Good luck in making contact. You don't have to go far. It doesn't matter where you are. You don't have to go far. And if you do manage contact, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people eager here to listen to the conversation. You just might be lucky enough to pull off. That'd be something else, wouldn't it? There's a lot of people out there to claim to be in, in uh, physical contact, verbal contact with these beings for years. And uh, we're definitely not going to learn about that in school, are we? I don't think CNN's going to report on it. <laughs> but anyway. All right, we've got another one here. Uh, this is a familiar name. I believe this is the man who saw the one walking west of Prince George along the highway by a bridge in the bank, and it had multiple glowing lights in front of his chest. I remember that with this name. Hi, Steve. Use my name. I've seen these things both appear and disappear. I've seen them take other forms, walk upright and on all fours. They can and do have complete access to your conscious mind real time. They can and will edit, delete all or part of that you remember of what you perceive. They can do so at will, allowing one in the party to see slash hear and remember, but not the others. It is quantum physics and the unusual appreciated property of water. Water has memory and consciousness, but no fear. Be like water. If you believe something so completely that it does not exist, then it does not, until it does. What time of the year would you prefer to exist in if you could choose to? Spring, pre-bug season, fall, post-bug? What if you could remain in an area, but simply shift yourself into a time fractionally ahead or behind the one we dwell in? Your entire life could be vastly simplified with this ability. They see what we see as if through our eyes. They download our life in a heartbeat. They also can do this with wildlife. A crow is like a flying drone for them. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a statement right there. I've heard that in the past, but just for me personally, I got a tough time with that because show me the human being that directly saw that a Sasquatch was looking at them through a crow's eyeballs. That's a tough one to back up, right? Sorry, I said to throw that in there, Phil. It's a, it's, that's a tough one for me to swallow, but I'm open. Why do they mess with us? Because they can. They're part human. Ever notice how lots of people are jerks? They seem to have an insatiable drive to manipulate. Do you know anyone with these traits? I know you do. It is best to avoid these personalities. If you could check out, if you could check a track set, after a time, a week or two, you might discover the tracks restart fresh from where you last saw them end. And they may actually continue in a distant location. I suspect they may be interdimensional as well passing through solids, traveling vast distances, only to slap your back wall on your house unseen. If you're a person of faith, you can dramatically reduce the harassment. In prayer, solemnly ask God if they have crossed the line, that he should punish them as he sees fit. Oh man, they don't like it. It's been effective for me. Honestly, people, governments, are a much larger threat to your health and well-being these days. I've asked God in prayer to help these people see the error of their ways. Unfortunately, Health Canada, Provincial Government, Fed, Gov, Big News Media, Big Tech are all willing whores for Big Pharma. Phil Huken, Prince George, BC. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Keep sharing, all right? Keep sharing. Gosh, what was I going to say on that? Now I start reading again and my, my mind goes, ramp. Um, that's what I was going to say. The, when, you know, numerous people, I think Scott Carpenter's probably one of the first to pioneer, uh, proving that rebuking them in the name of the Lord is effective, and it has proven to be effective for many people. 
Now I wonder why or if. Why can we not do that to some of the current criminals that are in the position of being called a global leader today? Why, can, why does it not work on them? I wonder why. Right? I mean, they're absolutely evil. Maybe they're just lost in their ways and they think they are doing good, but they're actually doing bad. I don't know. But from what I have gathered, being closely observing, these are very dark, evil people are in the positions of what's called leadership, and they're not leaders. And I, but I wonder why rebuking them, if anybody's even tried, what would, that, what would happen to them if we did that to them as well, right? Quick thought that ran through my head. Maybe somebody could tap in on that one. Anyway, we're getting a, we're getting some uh, we're getting a lot to chew on, aren't we? It's getting right out there, isn't it? Uh, right out there, meaning what we've been raised to think is right out there. Here's another one. My scariest encounter that stays with me. It stays with us all, doesn't it? Hey Steve, want to say how appreciative it is to listen and hear all of these stories you bring on your channel. My mother and I love listening to you every day when you upload new stories to share. Thank you. My name is Mackenzie, Mac, whichever name you prefer, as I'm not afraid of sharing my encounter with anyone as I'm ready to share what of what I experienced. I'm writing this as I'm on the road just starting a new job, helping load and haul cars across the country from Nova Scotia to British Columbia. Oh, you're seeing some country, man. My encounter is one that brings me flashbacks every night when I go to sleep. Right now is one of those nights where I can't sleep, thinking of this flash, if this flashback will ever go away. I'm from this little town called Boyce Town, New Brunswick. I was nine years old when this happened, so bear with me. I was coming from church one Sunday evening in August 2007. Around 9, 9.30 p.m., getting dropped off with my mom, Heather, walking to the back door of the house, and I, and I looked saw these two big reddish amber eyes looking at me from nine and a half feet off the ground in the tree line. I said to mom, mom do you see those big red glowing eyes in the tree line? And she replied, I don't see where you're looking Mac. So anyways I showed her where the eyes were and they were gone within seconds as I looked again and I'm saying to myself, what in the absolute F did I just see? Then years later, I clued in as I watched this video of these guys in Oregon telling their encounter fishing on the riverbank when they saw those same colored eyes. They didn't see just one set. They seen two sets of those eyes looking at them from across the river. And that's when I really clued into hearing about Sasquatch. I can just imagine how frightened they were. Anyway, Steve, I appreciate you taking time out of your day sharing these stories, encounters, etc. And I hope this helps me, helps by me sharing this encounter for someone out there who may be afraid of sharing what they experienced. I will say it really does help to get your story out there for everyone to hear. Be safe out there in the woods, brother, and may God bless you and your family during Christmas. Sincerely, Mac. May God bless you and your family during Christmas and all year round, too, Mac. Thanks for sending that in, man. And in your travels, I don't know if you guys... I don't know how it works with long hauling when you guys stop at truck stops and shit and restaurants. Do you talk to other truckers much? Like, is it a brotherhood? And if it is, um, you should try the old square your shoulders up, look a guy in the eye and say, hey man, you ever seen anything crazy weird on the road? Because I've seen some crazy shit. What have you seen? Whatever. Feel them out and uh, ask around because that's a valuable, valuable position to be in is traveling across a continent on land and stopping and meeting people from, basically you're going from sea coast to coast, right? I'd be babbling my face off to long haul truckers. Same as, uh, as same as the railroad workers. If I had access to all you railroad workers, I would the train conductors. I would be I would be on you like flies to shit, uh, pummeling you with questions of what have you seen? What have you seen? What have you? I know you've seen something. What have you seen? That would be something else for me. For me to ride along on a train at nighttime say from Alberta to the coast of BC. I would freaking love that. Oh my God, would I love that. But not only just once, probably, you probably have to do it a handful of times, right? To uh, eventually possibly see something that is not being revealed or taught to us in the sham education system, right? Interesting. I'm glad you shared it. I hope it helps sharing it, man. I hope it helps you sharing that here. It's, it's, 
It's up to a lot of people sharing the shit here, that's for sure. Man, I gotta get back down the list at the bottom. We've done a handful of recents. All right, here's a good title. Not that titles make a difference for me, but this is titled, What I Know. Right on, I love it. Okay, now you're really gonna think I'm a bullshitter, but you always say, send us what you got. It might help someday, so here it is. A person wrote to you about a deer in the road in Ohio on Route 7, not far from where I am now. Well, not far from where I am now, that disappeared on him just before he hit it. Well, I'm here to say they're not crazy, and neither am I. I never told the story to anyone because why would I? But now I have a reason. Hopefully that person is watching when and if you ever read this. I'll make this short because it is short, and here it goes. I was coming up US 23 on the Kentucky side of the Ohio River near Portsmouth, Ohio, heading home from a friend's place around 1 in the morning. I got that way and crossed back into Ohio because this, that side of the river is what I like to refer to as no man's land. Only one small town and one red light between the bridge where I crossed into Kentucky and the bridge where I crossed back to Ohio. Anyhow, I'm hauling ass up the highway in the lonely darkness around 70 miles an hour when a full-grown deer walks right out in front of the car. US 23 is a four-lane highway with a guardrail in the center. Where that deer came from is beyond me. It was facing the cliff side of the highway. I didn't see it jump the rail and the other side goes straight up a cliff out of the hillside. A lot of crap goes through your head in a split second when something like that happens. Like, oh shit, my car is totaled. And I'm walking in the dark. Anyhow, I braced for impact, and just as I hit the deer, it vanished. I thought, what the hell just happened? There's no way that deer went underneath the car. No thumping underneath, no smashed up car. Like I said, a lot of quick thoughts because my mind is looking for answers. Anyhow. I hit that deer solid, right in the center of the car, but no damage, none. So, I went on home and went to bed. Next morning I woke up, I was thinking, man, I had to have dreamed that shit. Had to have been a really vivid dream. So I walked out and looked at the front of the car and there was deer hair stuck in the cracks on the front end. So that proved it wasn't a dream. Was my guardian angel looking out for me? Did it go into another dimension? I have no clue. I just know it was there, and there should have been a wreck, but instead it vanished. My grandparents who grew up around here were very superstitious. They told of stories that were hard for outsiders to believe. Maybe they weren't that superstitious after all. That happened approximately eight years ago. The world is stranger than most people know. Keep up the good work, signed, friend in the States. Okay, friend, glad you wrote that in. Excuse me, and, uh, and there we go again. Somebody reports has the guts to share something that the majority of us would just shake our head and go, what the F are you talking about? And bam, there's somebody in a similar area had the exact same experience. Go figure, right? And then you got people all around the world reporting in the same experiences and they're not connected and haven't heard of that experience ever before anywhere else. Yeah, and then they get looked at like they're a psycho and they're making it up. <laughs> Not anymore. It's amazing how many people are here, isn't there? There's people from all over the frickin' world coming here and, and gathering in a group, and I appreciate every single one of you. And I don't say that shit much, do I? But I do. I absolutely appreciate all of the strong, brave, honest people that come forward with what they know and what they've seen here. It's, it helps so many people. It's just too bad the whole planet wouldn't get on this bandwagon, right, of, of uh, helping each other. And you know what? You know what? You know, another thing that you might not notice is when you get a group of people like this, we don't question anybody of what their sexual preference is or what they think they are or how offended. You know, there's, there's no even, we don't even think like that. Nobody here even has a half a thought of, of picking each other apart or being, or being, um, offended <laughs> having to scream out i like s whatever their sexual preference their their what's it called whatever they whatever they identify as we don't have any of that bullshit here there's no borders here there's no uh 
race mention here. There's nothing. It's just the way it should be, isn't it? Have you noticed that here, this group of people? This is the way it's supposed to be. People from all over the world looking each other in the eye, treating each other as equal, not giving a shit what you look like, where you were born, or what country you're from. Nobody gives a shit. We're all just good, honest people living life and trying to help each other. Ever notice that? <laughs> That's what this is. How fucking cool is that? Why isn't the whole world jumping on this? But again, you know what? We don't have any influence here in this group is we do not have any media influence here. We don't have any controlled influence here from anyone, right? It's all about us. We're all equal. And uh, we all help each other. We all look each other in the eye. For the most part, sort of. You know, it is online, but we are here, shoulder to shoulder, facing facing head on, being honest and helpful, and nobody gives a shit. Nobody even mentions the bullshit the mainstream media is dumping on the populations right now to keep each other squabbling and separating. Anyways, bit of a babble. I hope it just made sense in what I just said. Sometimes, like I said before, my brain doesn't mesh up with my mouth, but from what I am seeing here is when every single person is treated important and equal, shit happens. And, and it's an overwhelming, overwhelming amount of kindness comes from that. Don't you think? There is so much kindness here. Equal, equality, equal, everybody's equal here. Anyway, I'm babbling. Blah, blah, blah. I gotta get moving. And um, I gotta prepare too. Turn these things into uh, absolute perfect sidekicks for gravy mashed potatoes. <laughs>